What's up, Mr. G here, and in this video I'm going to be going through Section A, Problem 1 of this SOLIDWORKS CSWA Practice Exam Exercise. So, in this video we're trying to create this part right here on the right. Um, we've got a top view and a front view here with a bunch of dimensions. And for the instructions it says Part A, build this part in SOLIDWORKS, use the values below for global variables, then find the mass of the part. So our entire goal is to find the mass of this part. The unit system is in millimeters, decimal places, no information, part origin arbitrary, material type, aluminum, bronze, and it gives us a little hint here that says this part can be built using only two features. So I'm going to try and create it in only two features. So let's move this over to one side here. I'm going to move SOLIDWORKS over to the other side. I'm going to hit the Home tab and click on New Part. So first thing you want to check whenever you start this is make sure you're in the right units um, because you can do the entire drawing correctly and get the wrong mass if you're in the wrong units. So first thing, unit system, millimeters. Down here in the bottom right, this is your units. Before you draw anything, you want to make sure you're in the right units. Okay, so I'm clicking that and making sure I'm in millimeters. So everything else um, I'll talk about kind of as we go. I changed the material at the end. Um, yeah, I'll explain that as we as we kind of go through that. So, two features. The features that I'm seeing are, it's going to be one, this base here, this rectangle with the hole in it, that can be one extrude or one feature. And then this part that's sitting on the top, that could be another extrude um, pulled back that way. Or we're actually going to pull it forward. So, those are my two features or my two extrudes. So, I'm going to start with a new sketch. And really, you have a choice here. If you're going to do the base first, which is what I'm going to do, um, you have a choice. You can either do it on the top plane or the front plane. Actually, you can't do it on the top plane if you're trying to follow the hint. So if you're trying to follow the hint here like I am, you have to kind of go on the front plane because you have to include this circle. If you created it on the top plane, you'd only have a rectangle and then you'd have to use this as a separate feature. So. Really, our only choice is front plane if we're trying to follow the hint here and get it in two features. So I'm going to sketch on the front plane. And although it says the part origin is arbitrary, I always like to start my first sketch on the origin in some way. It doesn't matter where, like, OK, I'm going to make a rectangle, for example. You can make your rectangle going like that, which is probably what I'll do. Or you can make your rectangle going this direction doesn't really matter. You can even do a center rectangle if you want and attach it to the origin. And what it does is it just helps get your first sketch fully defined because you can have a rectangle sitting out here like this and you can set the dimensions of it and it'll still not be fully defined because it's not attached to the origin in any way. So if you notice this is still blue. If it's blue it means the sketch is undefined or underdefined. If I were to drag that onto the origin, it then turns black, meaning it's it's fully defined. So it's always important to just start whatever your first sketch is, start it attached to the origin in some way. So I like the corner rectangle for this drawing. I'm going to start it there and just make a rectangle that looks like that. So I'll zoom out. And you can notice, since it's attached to the origin, this left and bottom um, line are already black, meaning they're defined. So. Let's set the size of this rectangle by using the Smart Dimension tool. So essentially I'm drawing this box right here. So the bottom of the box is 60. I'll select the bottom line and set that with my Smart Dimension to 60. And the right side of this is 30, so I'll set that to 30. Next is I want to go ahead and include this circle. I'll click the Circle tool here. And I'll just kind of plop this circle in. I know it's not in the right location or the right size, but SOLIDWORKS is all about sketching something out and then adding the smart dimension to define the sketch. So I'll use the smart dimension tool, click on the circle, and set its size. It can be seen here. The value or the diameter of the circle is 12. From there, I need to set the location of the circle because currently the circle can kind of float around. So these two 16s here, this 16 and this 16, are what puts the circle in its place, in its correct location. So from the side to the center of the circle is 16, and then from the bottom to the center of the circle is also 16. So now my sketch is entirely black, meaning it's fully defined. 
from there, I usually hit um, exit sketch and hit control seven on the keyboard to get that kind of isometric view back. I prefer just looking at things in isometric view whenever I can. So there's my sketch. Um, I wanna go over something here real quick. Our next part is extruding this. And the value I need to extrude it is 28 here. Um, a lot of times I'll have students start out and they'll go to the features tab, they're ready to extrude, they click the extrude button and then they click on the box. Um, they set the value to 28. I always like making mine go backwards like that so you don't have to do that. But And then they'll hit the check mark and they'll say, well, where's my circle? I don't know where my circle went. So let me go back a step here. Whenever you hit the extrude boss base button, the next thing that you click, SolidWorks is gonna try and extrude just that polygon. So since this is technically you know, two shapes. I've got this rectangle and the circle. It's it's only gonna pick up the first one that you click. The way to get around that is click on the sketch in, in the feature tree here, sketch one, and that way it selects everything. It selects not only the rectangle, but the circle. Then when I do extrude, I'm gonna flip it back that way, it's gonna include that circle in the extrusion. So I'm extruding that back 28, and now I've got that shape. That's my base. That's my one feature from my two. Okay, so from there, I've got a little bit of a dilemma here. Um, like my the way my brain thinks is I want to create this shape and extrude it back kind of the same way I did here. But the problem is I don't have a plane to sketch on here. And there's two ways to do this. One, I can create a plane here or I can just draw on this back. I can use this plane to create my sketch and then pull it forward towards me. So I'll kind of go through, I think I'll go through both of those just to, just to make sure we can get it two different ways. So I'll start, I'll start with making a plane first because that to me just works easier the way my brain works. So in order to create a plane, I'm gonna go to reference geometry up here and click plane. What you wanna do is you wanna click a first reference plane um, for me, I'm just going to click this one right here, this front, and what SolidWorks does is it tries to take that plane that currently exists and offset it. So it's offsetting at a distance of 10, and you can click flip offset and it'll change directions. So I need this plane to be in a certain spot in order to create this sketch, and I have to look at the top view and kind of see how far it is back this way. So if this is 20 and this is 28, Simple subtraction tells me that I need to take this and um, offset it eight that direction. So I'm gonna change that value to eight and hit the check mark. Now I've got a new plane here. I always like making the plane a little bit bigger. I don't think it actually matters, but I just like to stretch it out so you can kind of see where that plane is now. It's eight back from this front and 20 forward from the back. So what that does is allows me a surface to where I can draw this sketch right here. So next I'll go to the sketch tab, click the sketch tool and click on plane one. It'll change my view to normal to that plane and I can essentially just sketch this shape out. So click the line tool and I'll just go ahead and kind of wing it here. Make it look similar. The important thing is that you include all the lines. If you miss a line you know, you might have a bad time. And a lot of times I have students in the beginning, they'll forget to close it. So you need a closed polygon in order to extrude it. So a lot of times students will stop there and then they won't extrude. So make sure you close it by creating a line on the bottom. You know it's a closed polygon because the inside will turn kind of light, light blue or light gray. So once you've got the shape set or sketched out, always add the smart dimensions after. So I'm looking at the measurements here. I always try and just match up whatever they have on the example. So some people might try and say, all right, well, this line is, well, let me do some math. I got to do 75 minus 30. Um, we want to try and avoid doing any of that if we can, because it just gives us a chance to mess up. Um, avoid doing math at all costs, right? That's my motto. So what you can do is just do a smart di dimension and then click this bottom. Just because it's in another feature or another sketch doesn't mean you can't use it for a smart dimension. So I'm gonna go from the bottom here to the top and then set that to 75. 
and that'll adjust my drawing or my sketch number two in order to be the correct size. And I'm just following along. All right, it's got a measurement here that says 20. And then you got to look at where the arrows are because they try and kind of confuse you here. Um, essentially, this line, there's two kind of ways of doing it. You could click this line or you could click this line to this line and set it that way. Both ways uh, pretty much work. Next one, looking at my arrows here, that's going to be this height. It's going to be 12. And then here's where people mess this one up, myself included, is this space right here is 12 from this existing corner to that right there. I have a lot of students that'll try and make this 12. This distance is not 12. It's from this point to that line, that is 12. Okay, then I've got a 20 here. So again, from this top of this base that we've already created up to here to this line, that needs to be 20. And once your sketch turns black like that, that means it's fully defined. So. And I try and match, again, I try and match the dimensions that they have. Mine may look a little different, like theirs sits out like that um, and whatnot. But overall, I use the same dimensions to create the sketch. And once I've got my sketch, I'll exit the sketch, go to Control-7, just so I can visualize it. And I need to extrude this back a value of 20. So I'll go to the Features tab. I've already got Sketch 2 selected here, so when I hit Extrude, it's going to... I need to flip it that way. I need to extrude it back a value of 20. So that's that. 20. And from there, I mean, the drawing's done. This is just two features. I've got, I've got a feature here and a feature here. This plane technically doesn't count. And from there, I would need to set the material type. So the way I set material type is I click on the part up here, right click, go to material, edit material, and then I look here, aluminum bronze. I use the search bar because it's a whole lot faster than trying to find it in all these folders. I might type like bronze in there and then aluminum bronze is right there. Hit apply. My part should change colors. Mine looks a little different than it does on their picture. I think that's okay most times. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, it just depends on what kind of graphics view you have on. Uh, so it's not always gonna look exactly like the picture. I would say don't panic if it does look different. From there, the whole goal of this was to find the, the mass of this part. So um, in order to find the mass, we go to the Evaluate tab, and there's a button that says Mass Properties. And then here's our mass right here, 537.19. And just from my experience, how SolidWorks you know, grades the CSW a exam is as long as your mass is within one percent you'll get the answer correct so you know you've got a little bit of variance of what your mass can be for a part like this i mean it's pretty simple um it's just two features so your mass should be 537.19 if you've done it correctly so that's the answer there and just to go back a little bit to show you the alternate way to do it without creating a plane i'm just gonna control z until I'm back to just the original thing here. Get rid of that plane. Okay, so also what you can do is you can sketch, click sketch, and then sketch on this back. Then you can change the view by hitting Control-7. I'm still sketching on that back. So when I start drawing, like here's my shape, I'm sketching on that back plane. And sometimes I'll even draw like when it's sitting in this isometric view. It's perfectly fine to do that. Um, get my shape going like that. And then you notice that I'm sketching on that plane. And then the only thing you have to do differently, I'm not going to add the smart dimensions because, I mean, it's the same thing I just went over. But the only thing that's going to be different is we need to extrude it forward a value of 20 here instead of, instead of extruding it back to get it to, to sit on there like that. So that's how I would approach this question. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.